In this video, I'm going to be testing out the Gourmia 7 quarter air fryer and giving you some ideas of what you can make in your air fryer. So let's get started. The Gourmia air fryer measures 14 inches tall, 15.1 inches in depth when measuring from the handle to the back and 11 inches wide. This model comes with wrap cord storage at the back. It comes with a multi-purpose rack and a crisper tray. The basket is 7 quarter in size and I can easily fit my 6 inch cake tin inside. My 8 inch cake tin, but with the handles I need to add on more so it comes out to 9.5 inches. And I can just about slide this in if I turn it in diagonally. And I can have something cooking in here and then I can add the multi-purpose rack on top and add more food to cook. Unfortunately, I can't fit my 10 inch pizza pan. Before you use the air fryer, be sure to wash the basket, tray and rack. Wipe down the outside of the unit and more importantly, clean the heating element inside with a damp cloth or a paper towel because you'll be able to get some of that residue off there. When you switch on the air fryer, you'll see all the preset cooking programs on the left. Air fryer, fries, bacon, wings, reheat. On the right will be bake, broil, keep warm, roast and dehydrate. It's all the same as the previous model that I reviewed. So the temperature shown here is in Celsius and on the previous model, the GAF698 that I reviewed earlier this year, there was no way to change the temperature display from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, I tried a couple of times and I also got a couple of friends of mine to try it on theirs but uh, there was just no way to do it but thankfully now they've added this option in this model and you just need to press and hold the temperature time button for about five seconds and it will switch to Fahrenheit and vice versa. The other thing that also wasn't on the previous model was the turn reminder wasn't auto enabled for the air fryer program. You had to remember to manually press it. But again, thankfully, it's been included in this model. So press the plus and minus button to increase decrease time and the temperature. And if you want to turn off the air fryer's beeping sound, press and hold the stop and cancel button. You'll hear two beeps and this will take away the beeping sound for only the temperature and time adjustments. It won't take away the beeps for the guided cooking programs. So for example, when it's time to add the food or to turn the food over. The first time you use the air fryer, run it empty with only the basket and rack inside. So select the air fryer program on the highest temperature, 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Turn off the preheat and the turn reminders, you don't need them. This will take away some of the plastic smell and also remove some of that residue from the heating elements. The air fryer starts with a low sound and then it increases slightly and it sounds just as loud as any other air fryer that I've used. I've also noticed that there's hardly any hot air coming out from the sides unlike the previous model that I had and I will leave a link to that video if you guys do want to watch. I'm to some cooking now and here are some skewers that I'll just cut down so they can fit inside the basket. I have all my veggies prepped and some marinated chicken. Add all of these onto the skewer then select the air fryer setting, reduce the temperature to 380 degrees Fahrenheit and add 15 minutes on the clock. Leave the preheat and the turn reminder on. So while that's preheating, I have some cooking oil mixed with salt and chili powder and I'm just going to brush it all over. You want to do this after adding it onto the skewers, otherwise it'll get very slippery and difficult to slide the veggies onto the skewer. Okay, I'll add them into the basket. I can fit three in because my veggies are cut a little big. And I'll also use the rack to add some more on top. Turn them halfway, carefully removing the rack. I'm using two sets of tongs here to grab the rack and pull it out. Flip the bottom ones all over and add the rack back in again, flipping those ones too. And all done, and look at these. They look amazing. Cooked to perfection. And the veggies didn't burn at all, and it's all down to cooking on a lower temperature. And the chicken too, it's not burnt on the outside, and it's cooked all the way through. 
Oh, it's perfect. This is a great keto recipe. You don't have to add the meat if you want it to be just vegetarian. It's a great snack or appetizer idea. And if I wanted to cook something fast, I'll set 375 degrees Fahrenheit on the air fry function for 15 minutes. And I'm going to add some frozen beef sea kebabs. Turn them halfway. And this time when I add them back in, I'll increase the temperature slightly to 390 degrees Fahrenheit. There's no need to restart the whole program again. It'll just continue where it left off, even if you adjust the temperature part way through. Okay, all done. And oh, look at these beauties. Let's take them out and let them rest for a few more minutes before cutting into them. And look at that, perfectly done to my liking. And just dip these into some green chutney and they are delicious. So good. And don't be afraid to bake in the air fryer. Here I'll set the bake function to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 minutes. We won't be turning anything so we don't want to enable that. Okay, while that's preheating, I'm just going to brush some melted butter on these homemade bread rolls that I prepared. And here's the tricky part. I'll just pop these small kitchen towels over the edge of the basket so I don't burn my hands. And then I can slide the pan in. Remove the towels and pop the basket into the air fryer. Okay, so since the turn reminder is not on, I'm just going to check that the tops are not browning too quickly because there's still 10 minutes left on the clock. Ooh, look at that. Perfect timing too. So since the top is browning faster, I'm going to very skillfully, um, if I do say so myself, uh, try to take this pan out using the towels and the tongs. Just be careful not to do this with any hot liquids. Okay, so I've just covered the pan with foil before adding it back in. I've seen some people use foil slings, but if anyone else wants to share some ideas, feel free in the comments on how to uh, get stuff in and out of the basket without burning your hands. You can always buy those full sleeve mittens, but then I also find that they're so bulky that I can't actually fit my hands in. Okay, we're almost at the end and I'm just going to add some minced or you can also use chopped garlic to some melted butter and also add in some parsley flakes. Okay, all done, so let's take these out. Remove the foil and oh, look at these and the bread smells amazing, just like baking in your big old oven which I hardly ever use to be honest. Okay, let's brush the bread rolls and they look so good. And I really should wait, but I'm just too excited to show you just how soft and perfectly cooked they are. And uh, just look at that. Oh, perfect underneath as well. So soft and fluffy inside. Oh, smells amazing. I love the smell of freshly baked bread. My whole house is just filled with it. Another very easy snack idea is using the air fryer setting on 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes and adding some frozen corn dogs. I've just put four in, but you can easily add five into this seven quarter basket. Turn them halfway and look at that, 10 minutes later, all cooked and so crispy on the outside. Can you hear that? And lastly, I'll share a very easy burger recipe. For this, I'll add some minced garlic, about two teaspoons, some salt and some black pepper. Best thing about burgers is you can always add some salt and pepper afterwards if you need to. Mix this all really well. I'm using 80% lean beef here. If you use extra lean, the burgers are just going to be way too dry because you really do need some of that fat to make juicy burgers. 
Then cover it and pop it in the fridge for at least half an hour. This helps form the burgers into shape. When you're ready, preheat the air fryer on 390 degrees Fahrenheit for 8 minutes. Switch off the turn reminder for this one because the burgers will be delicate and you don't want to flip them halfway. Remember to remove the rack if you have it stored inside like me. So while that's preheating, I'm going to prepare the burgers. Start by forming a ball. If your air fryer is ready before you, just pause it by pressing the cancel button once and it'll stay on until you press start again. So make your burgers by pressing into your palm until you get a nice big patty. You can also use a burger press of course. Then before adding it in the air fryer, just press the center down with your thumb. This will prevent it from swelling up on one side. So my burgers are quite big but they will shrink and I can only fit three in the basket. Okay now press the start button to resume the program and eight minutes later oh looks good so far. Now flip them and this time when you put them back in add 390 degrees Fahrenheit for only four minutes for well done. Less if you want it less well done. Disable both the preheat and the turn reminder. Okay, and now check out these burgers. Okay, let's add on some cheese while they're still hot. And I'm just gonna pop the basket back in to melt the cheese. No need to turn the air fryer on. And in the meantime, I'll quickly get my burger buns ready with lots of mayo. Let's take out the burgers. Oh, look at that melted cheese. Oh, and in case you're wondering, one of my kids is not a fan of cheese. Okay, patties are in. Add in all your salads and any sauces that you want. And look at that yummy burger. Made in what? I would say about half an hour in total from start to end. So quick. So I hope I've given you lots of ideas whether you have the Gourmia air fryer or even any other air fryer. But this Gourmia model I found to be very easy to use. They've definitely fixed a few of the issues from the previous model. The only thing I would say is that I've noticed on all the air fryers I've ever reviewed and used is do not follow the manuals or use the preset programs because they are set very high and the food always overcooks. In my first attempt when I followed the bread roll recipe for 375 degrees for 15 minutes based on the book recipe, my bread rolls were almost burnt on top and the inside was completely raw and underneath was also undone. Using the preset functions or cooking on high temperatures for a short time will almost always overcook your food on the outside and the inside is usually a little raw so it's always better to reduce the temperature and increase the time slightly and your food will always come out perfect. Alright guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you do have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to give this video a like and I hope to catch you in my next video.